Hi again. You know, at the beginning of 2017 and the inauguration of Donald Trump, I'd say now is as good a time as any to dispense with petty partisan petulance and political distractions and focus on the real issues. That is right after I finished making 69 jokes about this crazy Trump dossier. Because at this point, fuck it, why not? Here we go. In this document, it is alleged that Donald Trump hired the presidential suite of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel where President and Mrs. Obama stayed and employed prostitutes to urinate on the bed in front of him. And offended Trump shot back, saying these allegations are unbefitting of my character. I would never stay in a Ritz-Carlton. Still, this makes sense given you can't spell POTUS without P and O. Ugh. Now Trump may not be a military expert, but he sure seems to know a lot about dishonorable discharge. Trump supporters lamented how far we are from the good old days when the media told the truth, like the fact that Donald Trump brags about sexual assault. They said that information about this dossier was in a briefing provided to both Obama and Trump. When they read it, they told Obama, you're in luck. Trump, you're in trouble. And Jared Kushner, you're in this briefing? Obama noted that any speculation about Trump's sexual escapades could be silenced if he would simply provide a girth certificate. Intelligence officials are saying that the only thing more shocking than the allegations is that Trump may have actually read a briefing. Trump is saying that these allegations do not hold water, and neither do his hookers. This information came out just after Meryl Streep's speech at the Golden Globes. Of course, they were just the regular Globes until Trump got to them. But we should have seen this coming, since Meryl Streep is an anagram for my sterile pee. Trump responded with a tweet saying, Fake news, a total political witch hunt. He went on to say that Democrats should not be spreading false information that undermines their political opponents because, quote, That's my fucking job. Trump also pointed out that even if the allegations were true, it would still be perfectly legal because he wouldn't have paid the prostitutes anyway. Let this be a lesson to you, kids. Don't spread false information. Because if you do, you'll either become part of one of the most successful websites on the internet or the President of the United States. If you want to read a lengthy, damaging document about Donald Trump that has been verified, you'd have to read his Wikipedia page, or his Twitter feed, or a transcript of any of his speeches, or The Art of the Deal, or any of the Facebook posts of your 723 closest friends. Some say that releasing this unsubstantiated document hurts BuzzFeed's credibility. And wouldn't it be a shame if we could no longer place our trust in the journalistic integrity of the website that brought us Are BuzzFeed's penises bigger than yours? Men get their ideal penis size? Guys answer penis questions you'd never think to ask? Whoops, I cut my penis, the pube story, and 10 boner facts that are too hard to handle? Saying that this hurts BuzzFeed's credibility is like saying that Cars 3 hurts the credibility of the Cars cinematic universe, or that Kim Jong-un's glasses hurt North Korea's credibility, or that stealing memorabilia hurt O.J. Simpson's credibility, or that this hurts Donald Trump's credibility. Now, to BuzzFeed's credit, they noted that much of the information in the dossier was unverifiable, including how to pronounce dossier. BuzzFeed said that they published a document so that Americans could make up their own minds about the allegations. But the Trump camp argues that we can't trust the American people's judgment. They elected Donald Trump! At a press conference the next day, Trump called BuzzFeed a failing pile of garbage. Does that mean it's succeeding at not being a pile of garbage? Sorry BuzzFeed, you're just not cutting it. You're trying to be a pile of garbage, but uh, you're a website. Perhaps if BuzzFeed wants to be a more successful pile of garbage, they should be more like Coleslaw, since they once published an article titled, Coleslaw is a garbage food made by demons. At that same press conference, Trump refused to answer a question from CNN, calling them fake news. CNN said this accusation was impossible because people read fake news. Now, the Kremlin is saying that they do not actually have compromising information on Trump. He's good enough for me, said YouTube commenter Real American Not Fake 1991. It makes sense that Republicans believe the Kremlin. Based on their voting records, they also lack compromising information. This begs the question, who should we trust? The Russian government? The President of the United States? Or BuzzFeed? Much like Sodexo's dining services, all three options are terrible. Also, that would be the worst Mary f kill game ever. Trump called the leak one last shot at me from the intelligence agencies, asking, are we living in Nazi Germany? Not yet. Such Führer! Although, you know, Third Reich, Fourth Estate, what's the difference? Fifth Harmony? Of course, Nazi Germany and BuzzFeed, they're very different. One is an efficiently run entity with consistent principles, and the other one is BuzzFeed! One is a blight on our history that we must never forget lest we become doomed to repeat its mistakes, and the other one is Nazi Germany! On a serious note, we really have come a long way from Nazi Germany. From Goebbels to Dribbles. FBI Director James Comey is unwilling to comment about whether they're doing an investigation of the link between Trump and Russia. He criticized BuzzFeed, saying, How can you release this explosive document, cause all this speculation without knowing anything yourself, and not let me in on the fun? 
Now, Trump's been getting a lot of flack about these allegations, but to be perfectly fair, Hillary watched Comey piss away her chances at the presidency, and we didn't judge her. Double standards. The document also alleges extensive conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin. This was quickly denied by Trump spokeswoman Kompromat Conway. Now, the Kremlin is the one organization beginning with K that Trump will disavow. The document may claim that the Russians have blackmail on Trump, but he's had no trouble denying blackmails before. The Republican Party has had a wide range of reactions. Reince Priebus believes the allegations are false, which is ironic because I'm pretty sure Reince Priebus is a Russian sex position. John McCain, meanwhile, was the one who submitted the dossier to the FBI. When asked why, he said, I like people who weren't captured. On camera. With, uh, with prostitutes. It's not a perfect metaphor, but, you know, a revenge. Duh. Americans became even more concerned about these allegations when C-SPAN was interrupted by 10 minutes of a Russian broadcast. Who knows what could happen if Russia unfairly influences C-SPAN's viewer? Some are speculating that this is just a test run for an interruption of a more popular program, like the NTSC test pattern. C-SPAN has pledged to conduct a full investigation on this matter, which would consist of them just kind of sticking one camera in front of the suspects and letting it run all day. The document also alleges that Russia has a compromising document on Hillary Clinton. Hillary was heard saying, oh my, I wouldn't want to be embarrassed while wandering alone through the forest after losing a presidential election to Donald Trump. Hillary's allies are worried that the information in that document could be truly shocking. Something like that Hillary isn't a progressive who likes to get things done. As these allegations in Pesant about America's number one pissant, it's important that we exercise caution, like at a yellow light. We have a golden opportunity here, one flush with possibility. Yes, making immature jokes can feel like sweet release, but it doesn't take a whiz to see how these embarrassing leaks could leave us upstream without a piddle. I mean, paddle, if we're not careful. After all, in spreading this splashy document in lieu of any actual evidence, aren't we actually lending credence to the very accusations about people that oppose Trump that we've been fighting against for so long, and potentially undermining credible media sources that have already endured so much damage in the last election cycle. To that, the French would say, oui, oui. The Italians would say, let's not the Russia to judgment. But the Russians would say, I'm pretty sure Trump did it, y'all.